What a warm welcome and we're so happy to be here. So let's continue on. Some of our modern authors in today's age would call the Philippines as the treasure island of the Pacific. The Department of Tourism even said, go beyond Philippine beaches and surround yourself with breathtaking landscapes in the wilderness. Wander through rice terraces and counter local wildlife and chase waterfalls. And I will add, eat lechon, di ba? Go beyond the beaches. Sabay sabay natin alamin kung ano pa ang pwede natin ma explore and experience in our own country. Of course, this segment is powered by Angkas Life Corp, First Philippine Holdings Incorporated, and GT Capital. To kick off this panel, first up, I know you're all proud of him. Ladies and gentlemen, not much introduction needed. Founder of Kenneth Coban Puey, Mr. Kenneth Coban Puey. Cebu's very own. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, Kenneth. Grabe sa fans. Home court advantage. Owner and president of Amarela Resort from Bohol, attorney Lucas Doy Nunag. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Co-founder and managing trustee of Masugi Geo Reserve Foundation from Rizal, Miss Anne Dumalyang. President and Chief Executive Officer of Carpos Multimedia, overall festival head, Wonderland Music and Arts Festival, Mr. John David Oy. Owner and founder of Ralphie Gourmet Incorporated and the Chocolate Chamber, also known as the Chocolate Queen of Cebu, Miss Raquel Choa. Chief and co-owner of Hapag Manila, Chef John Kevin Navoa. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us and for making time. Mabigat ang stage ngayon dahil bigatin ang mga kasama namin. Hello and good afternoon. Before anything else, Kenneth, please greet them all. They're so proud to see you here. Give them a greeting. Uh, uh, and thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's a, such a pleasure to see all of you. And thank you for being here. And I'm just going to start my questioning with you right now. We are talking about tourism. Kenneth, you design, you make great furniture, you make great things, you create. In the past, way, way, way back in the past, when you tourism, it's not hotel, it's not just, it's, it's just hotels. Diba? It's just flights. And then food started to come in as part of traveling. But who knew one of the greatest pool for the Philippine brand, for tourism, was going to be you. Please tell us how, this, how you got started. I know you've said this story so many times, but how did you take, maybe from instead of what got you started, how did you take Philippines across these islands? Um, yeah, so it's actually, it's, it's, a long, it's a long story, you know, we can spend the whole afternoon, but in a nutshell, uh, I'm so always inspired by Cebu, no? Cebuano Mangyuko, Dereko Natao. In fact, uh, I still live here in Cebu, no? And inspired ko by everything around me, ang dagat, ang mga mountains nato, no? Ang mga tong, everything about Cebu, no? Although, karun murag tungod sa traffic, kukuan murag lisod-lisod na to be, to be inspired, no? Not as much as before. But so, um, I, I made my own furniture, and before that, all tanan mga furniture, kiba ma mga Cebu is furniture capital. No? Pero tanan na tong furniture, muadto sa gawas, lain lain nga names, lain lain nga labels, lain lain nga brands. No? So, mo tong nisugod ko nga, dili mani pwede, kinahalan yun nga, makibaw yun sila nga, made in Cebu ni. So, I started to use my brand. No? Niya, akong name was very difficult to pronounce, even in school. No? Kung kobon pwe, kobon pwe, lisod kayo. So, I, at, I nagdoduha ko unsay gamiton ako nga name na ingon to akong partner sa US ingon siya nga kibaw na ta successful ta when the world learns to pronounce your name na? 
And so that's why um, I started to make my furniture. Nga, akong first nga clients before, Mona sila Brad Pitt, no? uh, Hollywood nga royalty, they started to notice. And uh, because of that, siguro, that, that's how um, I became known, no? how Cebu became known. And so, sa una, I remember before, nga people did not want my brand. Kaya wak man ko yung name, no? In fact, it's, like, it's made in the Philippines, it's cheap. No? Pero after that, Murag, uh, it became very, very, became very popular. It was in a lot of movies, no? Uh, ang Seventeen, Blackpink, they, they used it for their album covers. So, mona, karon people look for the name. And uh, people, uh, karon, but that's also a form of tourism because when they see it, they always ask, where is it from? Did they ask Cebu? And siya, sama ng Cebu? Then, then you get to explain what Cebu is, you know, the inspiration, the story. So it's a different kind of tourism, I suppose. But definitely leading the way. And now when you say Kobon Pue, hindi siya mahirap. It's luxurious. Diba? Not, not in an expensive way, but rather, wow, always quality. You know it brings quality and art. Okay, was it always a conscious, was it a conscious effort that you thought to yourself, I will put Cebu here. I will make sure people will know it's from Philippines. Or you know, because some people, they want to hide the fact na from Philippines. Later on na lang yun, once ma recognize. What was your strategy? Yeah, it was actually a very conscious effort. No? And, and it's hard to market the Philippines actually as a luxury brand. No? Because um, now, without prejudice, in Moatoka sa Middle East, no? their notion of a Filipino is the, your porter, your domestic. Diba? That's always, and that's the prejudice nga I'm always fighting against. Kay mo ingon sila always nga nganong mahal man ni kan man is Philippines no That's always my I have to fight nga no it's as well made as any Italian nga product and it's really a struggle no but uh, I I know I'll, I'll you know it's slowly I'll get there no I'll succeed and convince the whole world that Cebu and Filipino made is second to none Beautiful story wow and speaking about convincing people Wow, you just convinced me to learn Bisaya because I understood what you said. Naintindihan ko lahat yun. Word, every word of it. Si pati ako nakukuha mo, Tourism Secretary of Cebu. Ang galeng, ang galeng. Thank you so much for what you've done for Cebu and the Philippines. Sir, good news. I've stayed in Amarela and I love it. Thank you. Your son. Okay, and when we stay there, Amarela po, in Bohol, it's not your typical big resort and all of that, but the charm. That's why people keep coming back to it. The charm. You feeling more you're really at home. What got you started to making this resort? It was supposed to be a retirement home. So it's home. Ay, teka lang, teka lang. The first plan was a retirement home for you. Yes. Okay. What made you open it up to everyone else? When we built it, it was just a bare shell. And then, as we uh, started to furnish it, we came across a lot of materials in Bohol from old houses, and we were able to gather a lot of old furniture. And so I put up a small woodworking shop dedicated to furnishing and equipping and putting up accents and uh, handicrafts for the resort. So, uh, as it developed, we decided that we were going to highlight Old Bohol as the theme of the resort. And along the way, we also picked up green practices. So, we made that also uh, a conscious component of our development. And, and so, it's a combination now of heritage as well as green practices. Sir Doy, before you created this resort, or Amarela Resort, were you already in the hospitality business, the hotel business? Far from it. Uh, I was, my experience in resorts was as a guest. I was a practicing corporate lawyer in my previous life. Corporate lawyer, but now making us relax. <laughs> Instead of giving us headaches. <laughs> no, but seriously, your resort, you know, before, kasi ngayon, during the pan, after the pandemic, no, 
all of these little BNB started springing up, yung mga charming, sustainable. But before that happened, you were doing it already in Bohol. Yes. All the antiques you brought in and you proudly showcased in such a beautiful way. Tell us the process. Uh, as I said earlier, as we were furnishing uh, the resort, we came across a lot of materials, old wooden floors, old wood, wooden beams, old accents like pie de gallo and lattice. So we incorporated all of those in our resort design in, in the public areas as well as in all the uh, guest rooms. And all the guest rooms have original art in them. And wow. so uh, we made friends with a lot of the local artists. Now we have uh, a full-scale art gallery on site. So it's really championing local communities, their yes. artworks, even their craft. Because you said yes. you put up a little carpentry area or shop to start it off, no? Yes. But I want to ask you, <clears throat> what got you from the point of retirement home to now negotiante? <laughs> when we built the initial building, which was the main building, some friends of my son came along from the sports uh, uh, area, basketball particularly, see si Pato Gregorio particularly. He said, what a waste if you don't share it with guests since it's too big for you anyway. So that's what got us started. And uh, when we built the first building, again Pato came and said, one building with seven rooms is not viable. So he said, build at least another 20 rooms. So that's what we did. So now we didn't grow too big. We're still at 31 rooms this time. Wow. But, but it already grew from the time that I went there and I got to experience it. But I think the magic there is you were still able to keep the charm despite the growth. The, that, that charming feeling, that feeling of Sonia's garden is here. Sonia was here. We have that charm in Manila, that Sonia's garden, and in Bohol, I think it's Amarela. Thank you. And we also try to keep the footprint of the resort as small as possible. And the pandemic was also a blessing. It gave us time to improve our landscape, really, not in a manicured way, but highlight local plants and flowers and we even built well we planted the in the whole resort a butterfly garden so we have we may have the most number of butterflies in any resort wow thank you for what you do you know it's thank rare you. it's always so tempting because if the negocio you just want to scale 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 but you've done it so mindfully so thank you thank for you. what you do and congratulations as well thank you okay I, does she also need any introduction? You've seen her in Vogue magazine, uh, so many write-ups, sometimes even the news. Uh, but really, do you guys know Masungi Geo Reserve? Raise your hand. Okay, especially those in Manila. You know? The very unique concept, but something that we all need everywhere in the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, Anne Dumaliang of Masungi Geo Reserve. Hello, Anne. Hello, child. Finally, okay. we see each other in person. <laughs> We've worked together, but never in person. <laughs> That's true. Okay, please tell us more, especially for the Cebuanos over here. What is it that Masungi Geo Reserve gives, shares, does? Because that's something, a model that we can actually adapt in any space here in the Philippines. Right, so hi everyone, I am Anne. I run Masungi Geo Reserve. What we do is we take care of 60 million year old Pinnacle Karst Formation in Baras Rizal. It's only an hour and a half away from Metro Manila. And we do that with a three-pronged approach of protecting the landscape, all the life that's on it, educating our guests and local community what makes it different and why it's worth protecting, and pursuing sustainable development through the practice of geotourism and regenerative tourism. So this entire work, I can't take full credit for it because it was my dad who was an engineer who restored that landscape for 20 years before we even opened up the trails 
that guests now enjoy. But come 2017, with the help of um, then Secretary Gina Lopez and powered by this vibrant tourism industry, we've been able to restore, and it's still ongoing, some 2,300 hectares of degraded land more through the fees that we've collected in the trails that we run. Okay, you actually built a model, I believe, that should be reproduced everywhere else in the Philippines with forests, with uh, these spaces. Why? It's very hard to find a park where you really get to enjoy nature. And for the, actually, you know, you've done it so well because you've priced it at, in a way, like what Kenneth said, a bucket premium Philippines yan, bucket ganyan, the quality, diba? Okay. So you price it in such a way, but people don't say no. They actually know the value that you bring. So just to check the, check on this, Masungi GeoServe is a private entity. What, what, what is it exactly? So that people could understand. It's a foundation. Okay. But we do the conservation work that we run largely independently. Now. So it's really privately led okay. when it comes to operation. The reason I'm saying this is because sana mga entrepreneurs, maliit na negosyo, malaki negosyo, taas ng kamay. Who are the entrepreneurs? Sino nang negosyo dito? Sino may balak magnegosyo? Ayan, ayan, mas marami. Sino gusto yung maman? O, di ba? Lahat na. O, yan, gising na silang lahat. Okay. You know, Anne and her sister and their family and the foundation and everyone, it's a different kind of entrepreneurial mindset because every day, they don't just battle business. There's a real battle cry that you guys are doing. It's real battle. The land is being challenged, if I may say so. And this happens in the news. You can watch it. Uh, my land grabbing na nangyayari. Siguro I'm taking the opportunity na to talk about it. And every day, you guys have to fight it. How do you sustain quality, sustainability, sell tourism, while on the other side, the burden of fighting for these things is happening, you know? It's like running a business for us entrepreneurs while the house is burning. So how, how do you do that? What is it that pushes you further to keep doing that? So for us in the first place, why we do this is because, ako, the reason why I'm doing this is because this is a place that I've come to love since I was young. So, lumaki ako kasama siya nung sira-sira pa siya, damuhan pa lang, wala pang gubat. I really felt like I grew up with it to the extent that I call it my little brother, you know? So, to finally graduate and not do anything to protect it um, would be, really, I always say it, it would be the biggest regret of my lifetime. Because I cannot fathom looking 30, 40 years in the future, those mountains being leveled down, malulungkot ako. There's a term for it. It's called solastalgia. Sorry, say that again? Solastalgia. Solastalgia, meaning? Meaning... It's not it's, Bisaya, so, uh, yes. It's the sadness that you feel. Hindi siya Bisaya. It's the sadness that you feel when home changes, when there are changes in the environment that happens that you feel like you don't have control over. Wow, no. and you don't want to reach that point. Is what you're trying uh, yes, to say. Yes, and I'm sure so many people who care about their own homes, the bad, the provinces that they grew up in, also have that feeling when their environment changes. But we always have to remember that we're the first two words, the ba. For tayo yung nakakita, nakakilala ng lugar, tayo yung merong responsibilidad na bigyan to ng bosses para malaman din ng iba kung bakit siya kailangan pahalagahan at protektahan. And when we do that, diba, um, everything comes so naturally. Fighting against all of these things come naturally. Of course, it needs to be sustainable. Um, and the way we priced it, you're right, it's at a premium. It's 1500 per person coming into the trail and a minimum of 7 for people to come in. Diba? But that wasn't haphazard either. It was understanding how much maintenance cost has to be spent, our future plans for the area, um, the carrying capacity of the place, putting that together so we understand the value that we need to deliver to people. That would make sense. Diba? So uh, that's basically how we worked it out in Masumi. But that 1,500, I should say, is worth it. 
Not only are you helping, but you are really growing to understand how to be. I think the word for me is, ano yung word mo? Sorry, solace. Solastalgia. I learned something new. Solastalgia. But also for me today, I would want to share with you stewardship. You know? We're not all here forever. So pag nagnegosyo, pag may ginawa, para may maipasa. To, to give something to the next generation. And that's what these three people are doing right now. Just three pa lang because they're the ones I got to talk to. Kenneth Cobenpue passing the craftsmanship para tuloy-tuloy. Yung craftsmanship, di ba? Ano nangyayari? The quality of that. Same thing with Bohol that you're doing in Amar with Amarela, Amarela Resort. And same thing with you guys for our forest na nakakalbo na. Eh, correct me if I'm wrong. We're left with ha ilang percent na lang. Yung primary forest natin na mga 3% na lang. In the whole of Philippines, <laughs> oh, oh. 3% na lang ang natitira na forest. Primary. Oh. Oh, pag nawala yun, wala tayo. Lagot na tayo. Oh, correct. Diba? And we always talk about decentralism. The reason why the Philippines um, get so much attention is because of their natural bounty, our natural heritage. So if we're not to take care of this and make sure it lasts for longer, where will it lead us? So thank you for what you do also, Anne. We'll get back to you. Uh, from forest, now I like this kind of tourism. We're really taking it further. Music. Okay, this time around, uh, Mr. John David Uwe, please tell us more about Wonderland music. To people who travel internationally, they know Coachella, diba? They know Wonderfruit, mga music festivals, kung saan saan. But we have here, because of you, Wonderland Music. Please tell us more about it. Thank you so much for the kind words. So, hello everyone. I'm John Uis. I'm the president and CEO of Carpus Multimedia. Like uh, what she said, we are the creators of Wonderland Music and Arts Festival. It's, uh, I'm very proud to say that it's one of the very first international music and arts festival in the Philippines. Um, and the only one that was able that we was able to sustain during that uh, uh, very very difficult pandemic years. No? So Wonderland basically it's a celebration of music and arts. Um, the beautiful thing about this is when I got the invitation actually I was very very excited because I was thinking about uh, entertainment tourism, the lack thereof in in the Philippines. No? Because um, uh, when Sir Joey was uh, saying kanina about Bali, Bali is such a tourist destination, but if you compare it to us, like in Cebu, the beaches here are mas maganda, no? But I think what brings them on a the next level is really the world-class entertainment that they put in the island, no? That's the reason why people fly in and go to Bali versus, for example, uh, Cebu. No? Uh, so there's so much potential in uh, entertainment tourism in the Philippines. And uh, I'm very happy that it's going to be a starting conversation and moving forward. No? Oh, we're talking about it right now. Yes. G give us the process. Like, uh, I saw on your site, I did my research, I was so interested with it. You said we're back this year because it happened this March, right? You, correct, you, correct. you had one. So what happens in the festival? These are all local artists that come together. Where does it, where does it get held? What happens? Can you talk more about it? Yep. So Wonderland, uh, basically, it's an international music and arts festival. So uh, it's about 22 live artists in two days. So that's 11 artists per day. And 60% of it are international. So we bring in artists from the West, Americans, UK, Australians, Asia, so all over the world. No? So it's a celebration of uh, basically the hottest music now. No? So, um, and then the process, uh, it's, again, it's two days. It starts uh, 1 p.m., it ends in the midnight. And it happens in uh, Alabang, Muntinlupa, in Metro Manila. Oh, I'm sure they would want that to happen here in Cebu oh, as yes. well. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, do you plan to go around the Philippines to make it tourism, uh, like a tourism destination for music? Yes, yes. That's the beauty of this summit, because I was just having lunch with Attorney Lucas here. 
And we were discussing about... It's gonna happen in Amarela? Is it happening? It could be. No, That's the beauty of this, right? We all get to network and uh, create yeah, new ideas. Yeah. Right. But we were having a really, really good conversation about um, bringing these types of events provincial level. So may it be in Bohol, Cebu, Tagaytay does it. And it's not just a celebration of music, but rather a celebration of local arts. No? So we have... We, we've, Attorney has this very crazy idea of doing a music festival in the Chocolate Hills of Bohol. So that's something we could explore in the future and maybe in Cebu. I'll also. tell you what, John David Oy, you have Kenneth Copenway looking at you already. You said art, he's got the pieces. You want a resort, you've got Amarela. You want a forest, you have one beside you. You want to serve sweet things and good food, they're next to you. That's the beauty of it, right? We all get to be creative and collaborate and network. Thank you for what you do. I like that. Music tourism. Give him a round of applause. Congratulations as well. Okay, now we move into... Oh, teka lang, nagkakaroon na negotiations. Okay, now we move... We love it. We love that here in Go Negosha. That's why we're here. We're trying to bring in everyone together to do great work for our country. Next one. We'll move into the Chocolate Queen. And I love that. Sweet talk. Please give us a sweet... How did you become the Chocolate Queen? Your passion for chocolate? Please talk more about this. People dub me as the Chocolate Queen. But until now, the company is 11 years. But until now, I really ask myself, why people call me the Chocolate Queen? Yet I'm not... Because when you talk about chocolate, of course, uh, you are... You are a chocolatier, you are a chef. Well, I think it is because I defied many conventions as a woman and as a Filipino. And that's what others told me. Because I am a mother, not just a chef, not just a chocolatier, but as a mother, a mother of eight, became the chocolate queen, a housewife, married at the age of 16, stayed at home. Well, what made me the chocolate queen? Of course, cacao is the instrument. Without cacao, there was no chocolate. I was dubbed as a chocolate queen after my interview with, um, let me see, um, the first interview with Sisdrilon and Karen Davila, Sabay kami ni Kenneth noon in 2013. Then Karen and Sis told me, oh, you're like a chocolate queen. It started um, when people discovered me in my small garage. As a housewife, I live in Mabolo. I started the chocolate buffet chef because... Um, Let's repeat that. Chocolate buffet. 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 That's how I started. Music to everyone's ears. Chocolate buffet. What happens in a chocolate but, buffet? But wait a minute. Um, people thought that chocolate is sweet. But what I am promoting now as a granddaughter as once the seven years old little girl who live in a secluded mountain here in Balamban, of course, story kasi ang lahat, no? So everyone knows that once the seven years old little girl who grew up in a secluded mountain cannot drink a cup of cacao, the bitter water, going to her school seven rivers away from home. So then, when I realized in 2008, or seven that, that that year when I realized I'm on my I'm on my late twenties, mag 30, 20, 29. That's the only time I realized that cacao is the main ingredient of chocolate. Then I became empowered. I said to myself, I found one of the hidden treasure that was kept in that secluded mountain. That when I was a little girl, I'm scared coming here in the city, going to the town. Because I came from the secluded mountain, which is two neighbors that time. But because of that cacao, I became empowered. And I have now the dare to dream and to be here in this Go Negosho. Until today, I'm scared. Back to that question. On the 2018 in the garage and 2006 in the garage, when I realized that cacao is the main ingredient of chocolate, so then I started a chocolate buffet. Chocolate buffet, pancit hab hab with Tablea. We're talking about tablea because the identity of us Filipinos is a tablea. People call me the chocolate queen, but I still prefer to call myself a tablea maker because that's what who we are. And from that tablea, thank you. Okay, 
Did you say pansit with tablea? Yes, and everything. Ha? Humba, lechon paksiyo. Kasi, okay, what inspired me na gagawin ko yung chocolate na buffet? Kasi because of when I realized that cacao is chocolate, and then mm, I want to tell to the whole world, I want everyone will acknowledge the hidden treasure. I want everyone will know about this. So, as uh, when I was, I remember when I was 14, I ran a carinderia with my mother, and then in Mandawe, in Tipolo. So, I'm exposed to the carinderia. So, ang ginawa ko, tablia lang naman ito, wala na may ibang halo. So, what I did, chef, I infused into humba, lechon paksiyo, even dinuguan. And to the pasta, to the pizza, everything, name it, and I infuse. Right? Everything had chocolate. You're my girl. No, You're thank, my, you. thank you so much for doing that. Sweet things. But you know, there was something very sweet about what you talked about. You mentioned that, you know, you, you, did, you weren't from the city. So what was it from that, that the cow made you fall in love with cacao? Oh. See, did you see it growing up? Was it something that you would just see in the mountains and then now you saw, wow, marami palang ibang pwedeng gawin? What was it? I love that question because that question I used to answer that it's not all about love. It is a must. Cacao is part of my life. When I was a little girl, I cannot leave the house without drinking a cup of cacao. So it is part of my life. It is part of my body, my, my soul, and my blood, cacao. So my chocolate journey and my life's journey is inseparable. Well, of course, watch my one of my talk in TEDx in 2015. Once a seven years old little girl became a speaker of TEDx. So watch for the whole life story of the Chocolate Queen. Wow, chocolate is your water. I love that bitter it, water. Yes, <laughs> that yes. was before. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Amazing. Thank you. And I think it's just the perfect timing, you know, because right now internationally, nakikilala. Ang chocolates natin. We're winning awards abroad when it comes to our chocolates, our cacao, and you know it's it's also agritourism actually. So thank you also for pioneering that and pushing it forward for everyone. Okay, from one chef to another, we have with us Chef John Kevin. Can I just say, during the pandemic, you were the last restaurant I ate in. Wow. Ah, really? And you guys were newly opened pa that yeah. time, diba? For about a year pa lang. Yeah, hapag, ladies and gentlemen, you know, pushing things forward when it comes to uh, Philippine cuisine and mixing it up. You guys opened during the pandemic or about, you know, when did you guys open? Uh, 2019. So when the pandemic happened, about a year na. So one year, you were, exactly year. you were just, you know, starting off and then building your name and then boom, pandemic happens. Right before the shutdown of your restaurant, I was, I think, one of the last customers there. So, oh wow, let's not remember that those days, right? So where is Hapag right now? Because now, if you call Hapag, so hard to get a reservation, so hard to get in. You would need to know Chef Chan to be able to get a seat. That's how, that's how things have changed. Please tell us where Hapag is right now. Uh, right now, uh, well, okay, uh, we're a restaurant in Quezon City. Okay, so uh, we're a tasting menu restaurant. We do anything and everything Filipino. Okay, so uh, the goal is to push uh, Filipino cuisine past its boundaries and see where it actually takes uh, not just the restaurant but the entire country. Because, you know, when we talk about Filipino food, at least abroad, most of uh, the friends I have would say it's adobo, senegang. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I love those food. It's just that we can't be stuck with uh, the mentality that's going to remain the same thing forever. So right now, we're just trying to push as far as we can. And, and you know, right now, uh, during the pandemic, kasi, how many times have we done the lockdown? It's so crazy. So this is, uh, we use it as a chance to evolve, actually. We changed the whole uh, system of service. Uh, we changed the style of food. Uh, we, we had a lot of time to work on the menu. Thus, uh, the backbone of the food right now is actually fermentation. Okay, so we make uh, our vinegar. We make our own rice wine. We even grow mold on stuff now. And it may sound weird, but it actually tastes really cool and funky. So, yeah, uh, I, I hope uh, what we do here today just helps even uh, more foreigners or even local to, uh, people to support Filipino food more. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. You know, the, the Philippines, we do not have yet a restaurant that's Michelin-starred. Correct? 
Why do you think that is? Uh, and do you think that's even needed? To, to bring to the world that, you know, hey, our cuisine, we have, we have that world-class cuisine happening. Uh, I think it's very important that we have Michelin Guide come in just because it attracts more people to, you know, come to the country. Just like uh, how 50 Best is doing it. Because um, recently we got 50 Best Discovery, you know, Asia's 50 Best Restaurants, Essence of Asia. The, I realized what changed for the restaurant was we had more foreigners come in. And then that's where it spiraled na. So more on, we'd have foreigners come in and then they'd ask about Filipino food more and we're able to explain it naman. So say, uh, I came in yesterday lang and then the first thing I did was actually get a car and drove all the way to the church in Simala, Simana, I, I forget, yeah. And then I went to this uh, waterfalls in, Ma start, sorry with letter M, I forget. Mantayupan. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's also meeting people around uh, these areas of, you know, Cebu, the locals, and asking them how they actually eat. And then the first thing I actually ate here was punko punko sa fuente. Puko puko sa fuente. Yeah. What is that? It's, it's a fried pork shop and, ano, uh, chicharon bulaklak. Fried pork. Cebu, ah, you are gatekeeping <laughs> and hiding this from us. <laughs> chicharon na? Bulaklak. Bulaklak. Yeah. Wow. It's very good. And then yung puso, the when you uh, the the rice. Yeah, it's like street food, I think. And then yeah, it's very bad for you, but it's very good. <laughs> it's very bad for you, but it's very good. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting you pointed this out, chef. Uh, same thing with actually all the stories here. We start to notice what's our own when other people notice. Of course, with uh, Sir Kenneth over here, the international scene uh, took notice and all of us Filipinos drove in. Amarela, same thing with the guests coming in. Before you even knew you had your own treasure, someone pointed it out as well. For Masungi, of course, it's also the, the international travelers coming in, right? To be able to do that. The inspiration, for you, for your music festival? Was it the music festivals abroad as well? Okay. You being recognized as a chocolate queen, even if you're a tablea maker, creator. Same thing with Hapag. You mentioned, that was so key. Going to the, in getting international people to come in and eat in your restaurant. And it's not a bad thing. I call this glocal. Going local, lahat kayo, but thinking international. Diba? So that the more people you serve, the more it does us good. So really, thank you for what you do. Uh, now that I know you, can I get a seat? Ang hirap na, no? Kidding aside though, you know, uh, I want to go back where we started. When Sir Joey pointed out, why does Bali, you know? We, we question that. And I'm sure any Filipino who goes abroad, not to say they have a bad country, no, they're beautiful as well. But we all do know our beaches are better. I'm so sorry. We have to be honest here. But I think all of you are a symbol of something. It's not just the beaches. It's the unique culture. That's what drives people from the Western countries, European countries. I know this. This is my business. I'm in the travel industry. When foreigners tell me, oh, why will I go to Manila? What's in your city? Buildings. I have better buildings in my city. I'll just go straight to Cebu. They have beautiful beaches. But one thing that they see, let's say in Bali or Thailand, in Thailand you go to the you go to their bookstore, the streets, you won't even see a single English signage. Their magazines, even in architecture, I I can't get an English copy. That's how deeply rooted their culture is. Their pad thai in a three Michelin star, if they even have, is the same pad thai taste that's so good that will be eaten in the streets. Their culture is so different. So, I'm saying this because you are a very important factor to tourism industry. Yes, the airlines. Yes, the hotels. Yes, all of these resorts as well. But because of you, you bring the charm. You bring the unique differentiating factor. Without you, all of you seated here, I will keep hearing the same things over and over again. Why will I go to Manila? Why will I go to their city? 
I, I have a better city in Hong Kong. My buildings are better in Japan. We have Disneyland. Why you? But you are the answer. Kayo yon. So thank you so much. Be it's true. This is the... Hindi lang siya cherry on top. Rainbow sprinkles all over pa. So, before we end, I would like to ask you guys, it's the right people to ask, to inspire everyone. Because everyone thinks, oh, tourism industry, I need to own a hotel. I have to have an airline. To help the country, I have to go big, big, big right away. But actually, with just your passion, you brought an entire country with you. No pressure also, Kenneth. Karga mo ang buong bansa. But you're doing it perfectly well. Please share with us your inspiring words. So other people, maybe a person at, at the back from Cebu here right now is thinking, I want to do the same thing Kenneth did and bring honor to my country. No, I, I think that the greatest asset that we have, no, it's not our beaches or the buildings as you mentioned, it's our people, you know, our people. So wherever we are, know that you are ambassadors of the country. You know, it's our OFWs, all the people around the world, and, and here, all the Filipinos, we're all ambassadors. So always keep that in mind. Short but sweet, but thank you so much. Always inspiring. Whenever you see a Kenneth Coban Pue, doesn't it make you feel proud? Proud to be a Cebuano? Diba? But, ah, that's us! That's us! Diba? That's Pinoy! So thank you so much for what you do. Sir, with Amarella, please share with us. You know, it's really so easy and tempting to always scale, go big, go big. But here you are doing the opposite, being mindful. Everything we do is to help. Everything we do should come with beauty, with inspiration. Please teach us, how, how can we be like that? I think we should be conscious that we have a lot of things to be proud of. We have very rich heritage and culture. So let us be protectors and promoters of our own culture because that is our selling point aside from our natural beauty. If we don't promote our culture, who will? Like you said, our guests have much better buildings where they come from. They are coming here to see what makes us different, what we are. Our heritage is a, really a reflection of our, our history, which we should be proud of. And I am very glad that very recently there is a conscious campaign of the Department of Tourism to incorporate local design and content in new resorts. So they are coming up with that uh, campaign where they are giving examples of how could how they could do it how they could put in local content local materials local furniture in the resorts and better still if new resorts will put local art in the rooms and public areas not just the stuff that they the shiny stuff that they buy from the mall but that makes tourism much more inclusive Thank Inclusivity. You. Thank you so much. Anne, your message, I mean, you're a fighter. You're a fighter with everything that you, you, you're fighting for people, the community there. You're fighting for planet. You know, sustainability is PPP. P. People, planet, and profit. Hindi naman pwedeng sustainable, pero walang profit. How will you sustain, diba? And you're doing all threes. So please, give us a message on how you do that. Actually, yeah, there's so much I want to talk about, but um, siguro if there's anything I want people to start with, and I believe anyone can start with, it's also balikan natin yung idea na we start with a unique selling point, right? And there's really nothing more unique than something that was molded by the earth and by science through time, through millions of years. And I feel like as a country that is one of the mega diverse countries of the world, host to 70 to 80 percent of the forms of life anywhere in the world, we have yet to fully explore that potential. We, are, we have yet to fully explore the identity of the Philippines in that sense. And each island will have a unique identity to show and to explore. There's still so much to discover. And pakilam lang kung hindi pa natin naintindihan in full, paano maging Pilipino kung hindi natin ginagawa yun at hindi natin kinikilala yun. In Masungi, 
yung tea na sinoserve namin is something that was wild crafted with the tribe we're collaborating with. It's not served any place else. We have a unique snail. Nasa masungi mo lang makikita, hindi eh, mo na makita sa iba pang lugar. We have a flower that is only found in four different locations, and people come out to see the identity of Masungi because of that. So when we talk about the Philippine identity, I would say, yes, culture, current practices, landscapes, our natural heritage, it's all meshed into one. That's what makes us uniquely us. Otherwise, we're just saying we're another beach with fine sand, which is also present in Europe, which is also present here, right? Well said. Thank and you that's, very much. And that's the big starting point, love of place, to really conserving and understanding the value of what we have. Thank you so much, Anne. You are putting us in the world map together with everyone else who's here. Si Kenneth Coban Quinaman is putting the Philippines outside of the Philippines, putting the mark there. But you know music, the good thing about music, it's nostalgic. When people hear music, they remember things, it stays in their heart. So please tell us what your future plans are for this festival of yours, the Wonder Festival, because it's really unique. And I really believe in it. That it's something we should push further by medical tourism. Why not music tourism? Any plans for the future? I like, that you, I like that you mentioned music tourism in specific. no, Because we've been... Uh, with our network and resources, we've started um, our efforts of exporting our local talents, which, in my opinion, is still the best music talented in Asia. I promise. I've been invited to different music conferences in Asia, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, all of it. Um, but every time I go to these showcases, I always look, think back and say, Mas magaling talaga mga Pilipino. But we, the, the, the problem really is the infrastructure and the support system. And so we took, up, we took it upon ourselves this year during Wonderland. I invited a bunch of delegates from Korea, Taiwan, uh, Malaysia, Singapore. I flew them in to watch Wonderland and our Filipino talents. And I'm happy to report that two of the Filipino acts have been booked by different festivals in Taiwan and Korea. So there's really, really big export opportunity for our music. It's, uh, it's, that's the reason why I'm, I'm trying to actively find the right partners to help me uh, give uh, the Filipino music a global stage. So my message siguro sa, sa mga Cebuano is to really, really keep making music that is unique and it, that is local. Because uh, Asian music is the next big thing compared to West. It's really Asian now. That's so true. And I'll just remind all of you and even to you to keep you inspired. Remember with thunders and lightning, sound travels fast. So you're in the right music tourism. Sound travels fast. Right? Okay, give him a round of applause. Amazing thing, very unique as well. Okay, two more over here. Chocolate Queen, tell us what is the future for you in terms of this space? Are you doing a music chocolate festival already? I heard you guys are talking. Um, where do you want to take this? What's your vision? Of course, it's a vision of the company that, uh, back to the vision of the company that I want to tell to the whole world that we Filipinos exist in the chocolate world, but we have our identity. And that identity anchored in our drinking tradition. I know Cebuanos, we, everyone in Cebu, uh, we drink, I don't know, everyone in Bohol as well, we call it Sikwate. So telling to the world, but um, of course this time, I want to bring it to the world. Telling is different to bring it to the world. So, well, of course, um, I think it's the right time as well to share this, uh, with you all that that is the vision that I'm bringing this time. That's why I know that everyone telling me you keep on traveling. So I started my one fit there to bring the the brand to the world like Kenneth Kobanfoy. Wow. Inspiring everyone here already. As long Kenneth. As long Kenneth. As long as <laughs> Jansi Kenneth leading the way. <laughs> I like it that you mentioned Sikwate. Because that is ours. That is local. That is our chocolate. That, that that's it, right? I love it. 
You know, I, I know about it. I love chocolate. Seventy percent and higher. You're my dark chocolate baby. Can you can you tell more about Sikwate to those people who don't know quickly? Oh, if now is your time to okay. chocolate queen to talk about it. Well, it's like uh, how do I? Okay, just to shorten because I know if I'm going to make another. Okay, it's like it's like uh, when you brew your coffee. Cacao, uh, coffee beans, and then you say that, like, I want to order broad coffee, something like that. So, us, we call it uh, sikwate. It's like brewing a cacao, just um, uh, cacao into, but in the, the difference is not the beans, but cacao to tablea, and then boil the water and then make it into sikwate. So, in short, it's like, it's like espresso cacao. So, that's it. No sugar, nothing. That is sikwate. And in short, it's almost like what we do every Christmas. Yes. Without the sugar. But, uh, but of course, uh, since cacao brought with the Spaniards, of course, I want to highlight that the brand of the company is the Chocolate Chamber. But of course, part of it is Cacao Filipinas 1521. Because cacao, again, the story behind of the brand is that cacao, we give credit and honor to the Spaniards who brought cacao in the Philippines. It was, of course, that is a significant year, that 1521, that is part of... Um, Cultural, of course. The, 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 the chocolate chamber, by the way, is all about the culture. Cultural. We are the cultural cafe. And then, uh, we, since we open already the chocolate chamber cafe now, not only the buffet, so there's already a chocolate chamber cafe that people can go and then, of course, have your chocolate pizza, pasta, mushroom soup, anything. And, of course, our 1521 chocolate high tea is one where we are known on that. So the chocolate chamber is all about cultural. Artisanal, highlighted that artisanal because that's what we are in a world of chocolate that is our identity as well. And of course, lifestyle. Perfect. This is what we've dreamt of. Sweet tooth, like me, would love it. Thank you so much to our chocolate queen. And last but not the least, of course, Chef John Kevin. Tourism for food in the Philippines. Make a daring prediction. Uh, hmm. <laughs> ah, save the best for last. Uh, Again, no pressure. No, no, it's fine. Uh, I think, uh, I, I know, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fine dining restaurants opening out in Manila already and actually doing Filipino food too. And then the story is, uh, I don't know if I should be saying this, but, you know, uh, the Michelin Guide might come. So hopefully if they come, you know. Uh, it'll We're ready. Be, I hope. But that's, that's the whole goal. Yeah, uh, so I'm very excited about that, and I hope more restaurants uh, should do the same thing. Uh, do it their own way, but, you know, try to promote not just the food. Because uh, when we do food, it also is in line with culture, the story of the country, how things are, you know, shaping up to be. And, and honestly, I, I have to say this now. Uh, sorry, I might forget. Eh. And, and when we open a business or any restaurant or anything, uh, can we not forget to care for the staff as well? You know, uh, there's a lot of people who want to chase their dreams, but they forget the people who are actually helping them chase their dreams. Okay, so just like for me, I don't forget the staff I work with every day. I make sure that they're paid well, uh, they eat really good food, and right now I'm trying to uh, change the whole uh, problem with chefs working 16 hours a day, six, seven days a week. Well, we'll try to balance that out more for at least our staff and hopefully uh, those of you guys who want to open a restaurant, please help us out. Uh, help uh, cooks too. Yeah, I, I just needed to say that. No, wonderful message. As I always say, together is always better. Thank you always. for putting that in and remembering yeah. as well to say that as a good reminder. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause. Our treasures for Philippine tourism. They're all here today. May I invite you please to take a photo? With everyone, what an honor to have you guys. Whether if you're from Bohol, Cebu here, or from Manila flying in, maraming maraming salamat po. I hope you guys were all inspired. Na inspired ba kayo? Even I was truly inspired. So once again, can we give a big shout out to all these amazing names? putting Philippines in the world map and really contributing to tourism. Thank you so much. I know you guys are busy, but thank you for sharing your precious time. Maraming maraming salamat po. Daghang salamat to everyone who's here. Thank you so much as well.